Hello, good morning, good afternoon. This is Marcella Ernie with Ernie Racing and my 2020 KTM 300 XC TPI. Riding season is here, I'm prepping guys. So what we're doing today is we're changing out um, the clutch cover here. So these OEM case covers, if you drop this and you land on a rock in this one zone, I'm pretty fortunate because I got my bash bar guard here, um, the Emperor Racing skid plate uh, pipe guard, but you can see it's been hit a lot. So, And uh, this thing is, I do not want to be JB welding and on the trail when I want to be riding. So we're going to change this. I think they're made of magnesium alloy, but you know, you can just, you could crack it with a little hammer. For this beautiful 76, oh, let's get out of the light, 7602 racing. Made in the USA, solid piece of billet aluminum. Comes with a a billet fill top as well, because I have seen videos of people also cracking the plastic right here, and then you got to make some kind of filler to th finish your ride out. But yeah, one nice big piece of billet shipped here. I'm in Canada here in BC, so this thing was shipped right to me using USPS. I had no brokerage, nothing. Um, it was so just uh, just the. Simple mail, ordered up guys, Canada, US, worldwide, whatever. This was my favorite one um, because of the billet design, but also the added bonus of, of sight glass. You can see like there. So the Kate, as you know, if you have a dirt bike, typically there's no sight glasses, just like on street bikes. So you fill it up and then you pull out the oil tip to let it overflow, or you just measure the exact amount and do it over and over. And you never quite know how high up it is within reason anyways, but uh, it's gonna be nice to have a sight glass. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it guys. So anyways, I'm gonna remove all the torques and then uh, I should just pop right off. Maybe get that brake out of the way, the rear brake spring, but uh, otherwise maybe don't even need to. So. so my name is Marcel Ernie with Ernie Racing, Ernie Racing News. And uh, today I think it's April like 16th or something. Oh yeah, I guess I should mention step, step one, one is I'm gonna drain the oil. Did not need to drain my oil, but uh, it's not much of a quart. I can't remember. You know, because when you take the case cover off, obviously your sight glass window is gonna be this much oil in there at the bottom. So I don't wanna get oil everywhere, taking the case off. So yeah, let's get that drained. I'm using the Amsoil SAE80. It's an 80 weight gear oil, dirt bike transmission fluid from Amsoil. So this is what we're using, guys. This one is new, it's not open yet, okay. And oh, by the way, this stuff is awesome because I've tried, obviously, what came in, the Motorex that came in it, and then I've tried a 2050 as well. And this one, the little thinner viscosity allows nice engagement. You can really feel the engagement, click, click, click. And it eliminated eliminated the, um, the false neutrals essentially you're not getting into gear and you hit a, you know you hit a or just hitting not even false neutral sorry there's tons of neutrals you're always going between first and second second and first and I used to hit neutrals you know maybe like five to ten per ride and now used when I after I switched to this from the the original OEM and then the 2050 Amazon I tried and then 20 and then went to this maybe one per ride if, if any just essentially, you, you know, as long as you're thinking about concentrating on a solid shift, you'll never have a problem. But before, there was problems. So it takes 0.85 quart. I think it actually says something like, anyways, I just looked up the manual. And another little trick, guys, I like to start at 12 o'clock and always go clockwise. So you remove the, that bolt and then, you know, then you're at two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, you know, six, around in the circle and then put them down on order on, on something, a table. And that way you, in case there are different lengths, which they're probably not, but in case they were, you would not lose your order. Okay, I got all the bolts out and check it out. See, I was right, different lengths. That's why, again, 12 o'clock going around in the circle. So here is super lightweight, thin, easy to snap. I mean, just listen. Yeah, the difference is huge. In terms of weight, I'm, you know, I'm gonna add some weight for sure, for safety. You add weight for safety, it's just how it is. Oh, and there's a little gasket in there. 
Looks like I'm gonna need to take that gasket out. Oh, that's kind of annoying. Hmm, so hopefully it comes out. I'll try to get in there with fingernails or a tool that not to wreck it. We'll see, I'll be back. And yeah, there's the clutch. Oh yeah, make sure you, I went and power wash this area. You know, you don't want any dirt falling in there, of course. That's why you have clean oil and oil filters and vehicles and such and such and such. Okay, I carefully cleaned the edge just with a rag. And I finally opened the instructions. It comes with one bolt and it mentions that bolt goes in the five o'clock position. So the five o'clock, one, two, three, four. So one, two, three, four. This one is replaced right there with a slightly shorter bolt. And the instructions are talk about removing the O-ring. And it says, and then put the push the O-ring on the 12 and six o'clock and then nine and three and make sure it is all sealed in there correctly. Um, it talks about that. Continue pressing seal. Make sure there it's no no twist. Use the bolt. Um, yeah, stand, and I guess it says pay attention to the order of your bolts as well. So reading instructions instructions is always useful. <laughs> Let's keep going. So that is how I did it. I went to like the little edge there, which gives a little. You can see it on the there's a little lip there, but I just got the toothpick underneath it. Just. The toothpick will break before the wire would break or the, the and uh, yeah and then we can pull it all out so just wanted to show you guys I use a toothpick because you do not don't I, I was thinking otherwise like a visa card or something like a plastic card that's thin and that would be the good way to do it I also want to show you an extra step that I did because I'm taking my Amsoil multi-purpose any any grease and I just slightly you know with my fingers lubed up the o-ring and uh, just kind of yeah you can I can just do it one-handed almost but you know it gets a little twisted right here you got to make sure you untwist it so anyways keep going perfect easy yeah I think the grease just helps it slide in I had one little twist so I actually had to reflip with the section in after I put it in but it's really easy to figure out and so I'm gonna make sure I don't have any dust in here and we're gonna start to put her on the moto I also took the grease with my finger and did a just a thin little layer along the whole edge so it's just going to help with the sealing up and uh, try to do this on camera <laughs> one-handed oh this is tough with one hand there we go so that's how it lines up boom oh yeah it's gonna be like fine see they act they had orange ones as well I could have had bling or gold or whatever but I'm like I just wanted to keep it more subtle so that's what I went with also I like to use Loctite blue Loctite on everything every bolt on the bike like it, it might not seem necessary I even use them on the exhaust um, which have those I can't remember what they're called but they're they lock on really well and you, so I just pre-did all the bolts and again we're gonna start at 12 o'clock and I'm gonna work my way around catch you guys soon Okay, I've actually come across a slight complication. Where the spring connects, it is, it's like freaking almost eight millimeters diameter versus the stock one, just a little three millimeter hook. So the spring was able to hook into it quite easily, right? And get around and stay in position. So what I've done is I've bent it. You can see like a square with a little tip as opposed to like a curve like that. Um, and then I might have to take the, I, I didn't bolt the case cover down, I just put the bolts in loose. But to get it in there and then where it stays in there and then hook the bottom onto the brake lever. So I'm probably going to pull it off and get that in because you don't want it to spring to fall out randomly. Actually, it didn't have to take it off. You can see my bend works perfectly. And now I'm going to grab a set of pliers and just get that on the brake lever. There, I could even do it on camera if, if I was looking in the right spot. <laughs> and there you have it. So yeah, just bend it correctly and it'll work perfectly. And now I can get down to actually applying a little pressure to these and just do them all even across the board, right? Loose, so it stays center along the... Oh yeah, and the other thing, I wish he had a Torx with the eight millimeter. I mean, these are all eight millimeter Torx, so unfortunately you're gonna have one odd bolt where you're gonna need an eight millimeter now. <laughs> yeah, so I, I just pulled out the eight and just went around using um, you know like 15 foot pounds just really short stock up on your wrench and just get a feel for the differences as you go you can as you can you can get an idea go around a few circles you'll find one that's like oh that one's a little loose 
and there you go and that's why we have loctite you don't need things super tight so there you go now i'm just going to put the drain plug back in beauty take a photo look at that beaut okay so now that we got our new um fill <laughs> aluminum fill cap i realize it's uh 13 so or who knows what that, that size is that's almost like the same size as the rear axle like a 32 so it might be an easy way because everyone carries a rear axle tool with you i do have an aluminum 32. and then what i did is i took 0.8 it's 8.8 .8 of a liter, 0.85 of a quart, and I just filled this exactly to that right there, you see? 0.8 of a liter, and um, that way I can just pour an exact amount, and then we'll see what the window says. We'll see um, what the measurement is compared to the window. So there it goes. It's actually, oh. You can see in the window the air bubble. It's nice. Well, I mean, I can see it. I don't know if you guys see it. So anyways, that's 0.8 of a liter, so we're gonna pretty much use it all, and we'll see where the sight glass shows. There you have it. Once it's settled down, there's the sight glass. Look at that, right halfway. Let's get a photo of this. Beauty. You have it. Happy to be done. Okay, so yeah, now I'm gonna do a little booting around the yard maybe. Um, I got some other parts to install on the moto as well, but uh, I got a, I got the T, the two-stroke performance head. The ECU is now reflashed and back on the bike, but you can ride regardless of changing the head. I'll do that later and put new piston, new piston kit in and do all the refresh. And I have a, a TMI with chain guard to throw in as well. But uh, anyways, guys, I am Marcel Ernie. Thanks for watching. I will of course be testing this product on the trail and uh, see how it gets all scratched up, of course, as you go, and um, not have any issues, I would assume. So anyways, there you go, guys. There you have the 7602 Racing case cover. Now, I, I wish I had one for the other side of the bike. This, cause look at this stock case cover, it's just completely, it looks like shit, and again, um, is a little bit vulnerable as well, right? Along with the gas tank here. <laughs> Yeah, so this happened. I, tried, I had to shoot up this rock. I know you guys can't see it, but like if you zoom in, full zoom. Yeah, it's a little height. We're on a little trail. Whew! Oh yeah, and then this way it's cliff. Cliff, cliff, cliff. <laughs> so yeah, I gotta try to get up the rest of this now.